Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. I appreciate you stopping in so much tonight. I've got a recipe very different from anything you've seen on my channel tonight. A couple of different sheet pan type meals and a couple quick little desserts too that I think you'll like. So it's been a busy week here at our house. Just sit back, relax, grab a glass of sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Today's video is a special What's for Dinner collab with my friend Sammy. Her channel is called Managing the Maze. I know you're going to love her. I'll be sure and leave her channel and her video down in my description box for you. Sammy does Sunday suppers every Sunday. She does grocery hauls, some cleaning, and uh, some vlogs too. But I've enjoyed getting to know Sammy. She's a great cook and just a super gal. And I know you're going to love her too. And if you're here from Sammy's channel, thank you so much for stopping in. I hope you'll stick around. The first meal that we're preparing this week is this filet that we got at Sam's Club. It was a really good deal and we were just going to use one of them in this meal and freeze the other. Decided to marinate it in this brown sugar and bourbon marinade and we're just mixing it up according to the package of directions. I say we're because my husband is actually cooking the steak. We just meant to marinate it for a little while. Well, we got busy and we ended up not cooking it that night, so it sat in the marinade overnight, which was a little much. It's pretty strong, but it still tasted really good made it very tender for sure and we saw when we pulled these out that we actually had two fillets in this one section that we cut apart to do so this was a lot he wanted to try to cook these in the cast iron skillet on top of the stove so you get it really hot with just some olive oil in the bottom of your skillet and pretty much you sear it you get it on a really high heat and he filleted these even more than they were, so they were didn't take long to cook at all. We would use our instant read thermometer every so often, and when they got to about 140 degrees, he'd pull them off and let them rest. These steaks were delicious, but I don't know if you've ever cooked a steak like this inside in cast iron. There was a lot of smoke, and my little just residential oven hood could not handle this. This required some doors being opening, some fans being brought in. It was smoky in here, so be forewarned um, if you go to do this. He said it would be smoky, but I don't think he even thought it was going to be like what it ended up. But it, it got really smoky and there was a lot of grease. So it was a big messy meal, but it was delicious. He did a great job on these, but we'll definitely just stick to the black stone outside. I cooked up just some boxed all gratin potatoes and we had green beans with this meal and it was yummy. Now the second meal is a quinoa salsa chicken. My daughter's preparing this. She likes to do meal prep every week or every other week and she makes large amounts of this and takes some in her lunch and freezes some. So the first thing she's doing is she's got all these onions and peppers chopped up so pretty and colorful. I'm gonna cover them with some olive oil and salt and pepper and then roast them in a 400 degree oven, maybe 20, 30 minutes, just till they get to tender, you know, to how you like them. And here she's rinsing some quinoa. I believe she used two cups of it and you use two cups of water to every cup of quinoa and then you just boil it up like the instructions say. She did put some of this better than bouillon chicken base in it and some garlic. Then she's got another pot that's got some corn 
that she has drained and some black beans that have been rinsed and drained and use just a couple maybe a tablespoon out of that taco seasoning pack to season that up and there is her pretty quinoa quinoa is one of those things it's kind of like avocados to me and every time i see it in a dish and try it i think i'll really like it but there's just something about it it's not my favorite then she's got three chicken breasts and she's using the rest of that taco seasoning to cover both sides of that chicken breast and then she'll just cover them with a little bit of salsa and cook them up in the oven as well. So once everything's cooked, she's just separating it out and making bowls out of it, layering the quinoa and those nice roasted veggies and then the chicken and salsa and she will freeze probably four of these and then she ate out of a couple of them for lunches this week then next week she'll probably use another big recipe she has and meal prep something else and freeze part of it so after about three or four weeks of doing this you've got a pretty good variety in your freezer this is a beautiful colorful healthy meal it beats going through the drive through and it's nice to have it all done up ahead of time. The next night, I'm gonna make some chicken and dumplings in the crock pot with gnocchi, and this is Kat from Southern Farm and Kitchen's recipe. You just use a can of cream and chicken soup and a can of cream and mushroom soup and then you use two cans of water. Gonna use about a tablespoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of parsley and a couple spoonfuls of the chicken bouillon base. Mix all that together and then I'm gonna put in three frozen chicken breasts and I'm gonna let that cook all day when I'm at work on high. I had a friend from church that's been kind of under the weather the last bit and I was going to take her and her husband some dinner this night and I just thought this would be perfect. I had been wanting to try this for quite a while and it was easy. All the work was pretty much done by the time that I got home. When I did get home, I just took my chicken out of the broth and then put my gnocchi, broke it up and put it down in all that wonderful broth and soup mixture that's left. Then I'm gonna shred my chicken up and put it back in and I just cover it and turn it off and let it sit there while I'm baking up some brownies. And these are brownies that y'all have seen me doctor up before with the marshmallows in them. It just gives it a wonderful gooey flavor. It tastes almost like they're caramel in them when you cook it with these marshmallows. But I'll leave that in case you missed it. By the time these brownies cooked up, the chicken and dumplings were ready to go. I appreciate this recipe so much, Kat. It was delicious. And I will be sure to link her channel down in the comments below. Most of you all already know Kat. I've collabed with her before too. I'm just dishing up a bowl for Patrick before I take the rest of it off. And I just want you to look. I was never any good at making dumplings. And this is how I will do chicken and dumplings from now on. That gnocchi was delicious and all the flavors of the soup and the seasonings in it, it just couldn't be beat. I loved it. Now the next night, I'm making another sheet pan meal. This is something new and that I had never tried before. I have a bag over there that I've got four chicken breasts in 
and they're the thin breast and they were frozen and I had had them thawing out in that bag in the refrigerator and I'm just cutting up some vegetables to go in there, some potatoes, and then I had these little baby carrots, they're the really little ones, and I put an onion in there. And I'm just going to use a McCormick's seasoning pack that my friend at Our Small Town Life has been showing in her grocery hauls. She has really been bragging on this one. The Farmer's Market is the name of this particular packet, but they're called One Sheet Meals. But all you do is just mix about two tablespoons of oil with your seasoning pack and then toss all of your vegetables in it. you get everything coated up really good. I just lined my pan with some aluminum foil and sprayed it with some nonstick spray. Got everything spread out in one layer and I baked it about 30 or 35 minutes at 400 degrees. And there's just nothing goes any better with this meal than a big fresh salad. I just wanted to take a minute and say a big thank you to all of you guys that are watching my videos each week. I just appreciate it more than you would ever know. It's so nice that I have found a place where I can engage with you and share what I love to do which is cooking, piddling in my kitchen, taking care of my family, and just getting to share a little bit of my life and my kitchen and my heart with you every week. I love getting to know you in the comments. So if you watch and you're not a regular commenter, I wish that this week you would come down and introduce yourself in the comments and tell me something about yourself. I love getting to know you, especially you new folks that may be here from Sammy's channel. Nothing would tickle me any more than to get to know you tonight. If you've not subscribed but you've been watching, I'd love for you to do that. That just helps my videos get put out to a few more people. As soon as this chicken came out, it looked and smelled delicious, but the first thing that I thought was, wow, everything's the same color. So I was really glad to have that salad. My family was certainly impressed with that seasoning pack. So the last thing that I wanna do is to bring you along as I make a birthday cake. I'm gonna start with just a regular strawberry cake mix, but we're gonna change up some of the ingredients just a little bit. We will use the package just like it comes. And I'm going to use three eggs just like the box says. But instead of oil, I took one stick of melted butter and added that in. And then instead of the water, I replaced that with one cup of buttermilk. And that's just a cup of milk with a tablespoon of white vinegar in it that I let set for a little while. And then I'm just gonna mix it up like you would regularly. Once I get it mixed in, I'm gonna take about a cup of these mini chocolate chips. They're just little bitty. And I'm gonna fold those into my batter. I have been making little pink birthday cakes for 24 years now. And there's nothing that brings my heart any more joy than to find something new and different to do with them. I've made them with rainbow sugar crystal icing. We've made them look like unicorns. We've done so many things with these little pink strawberry cakes for our girls. But this year, I decided I wanted to do a square cake. 
not a 9 by 13, but just like 8 inch squares. So I did try to measure out the batter to make it equal as well as I could. When I do a layered cake, I try to do that. So I used a one cup scoop and tried to get them pretty well even. And then I just bake them up according to the directions. I've always made the double layer round cakes, but I had never made a square one. And I saw these pans sitting at the Dollar Tree one day and I just had to have them and I just wanted to make a square cake. I don't know why I got so excited about it, but it did turn out really pretty. So I let them cool in them pans for just a little bit and then I turned them out onto a little wire rack and let them cool a little bit more. If I'd had time, I would have stuck them in the freezer for a little bit, but I just didn't have time. So I'm going to decorate this on this pretty little cake stand and I'm just cutting me some wax paper to kind of go around the edges of my cake. And I'm going to turn it upside down because I want it to be very flat there in the middle. And this wax paper is just going to catch any icing that drips off or anything like that. And then when it's set up, I can just kind of pull that out and my cake pan will be nice and clean. And I decided I was going to melt this frosting a little bit. And I have done this before when I make like a 9 by 13 cake and I'm leaving it in the pan. I'll get my icing pretty melted and just pour it over it. But I've never done it on one of these layer cakes. So I was being real cautious. I didn't get it super runny, but I just did it, you know, maybe 10 seconds at a time. So I've got my middle layer or what will be the middle layer I seem to now and I've got to decide do I want to do it with the bottom on the top or do how you know how do I want to lay this on there if I'm doing two round cakes I'll lay it on there with the top part looking kind of round here I kept going back and forth about what to do but I did just lay it on there the bottoms together because it did make it look more like a uniform square to me. So I'm pouring this icing on here and I'm still not sure if I should have just maybe got it a little bit more pourable and just went for it. I was kind of scared to. If y'all hadn't figured out by now, I don't really um, test things out necessarily before I show them to you. I just let you fly by the seat of your pants with me. You know, I just, I couldn't decide what to do. So I got the top of it done and then I thought, okay, I'll just pour it around the edges and maybe make it like a drip cake. I don't know if you've seen those or know what I'm talking about, but they kind of just have little drips that go down the side, but that wasn't really pretty either. And the thought crossed my mind, I could just take my cake spatula thing and kind of scrape the icing across the sides and leave it kind of bare and just have mainly icing on the top and have it kind of naked on the sides. But I couldn't stand to do that either because I like a lot of icing. So I just decided I'm just going to take the back of this spoon and I'm just going to fill in the sides of this cake. It was a lot harder to ice a square cake than a round cake for me for some reason. I don't know why. But I knew I didn't want to try to do it with my cake spatula. That wasn't going to work with the frosting so runny. Um, it will harden back up as it kind of sets. But, you know, I don't ever have anything that is made to look really perfect. Um, that's just not the way I'm made. <laughs> so I just worked with it. I kind of pushed the icing around. I went around the corners and filled in. 
And then once I kind of got it covered, I just took the little bit of icing that I had left and I just made those little designs with the back of my spoon. I like it to look like little waves or something, little white caps. So that's kind of what I did with it. And then once I got it all covered, I put it in the refrigerator and let it set up for just a couple hours. And guys, I'll, you be careful. If you icing a cake on a cake stand and you have this wax paper under it, it will be slick. I nearly lost this cake bending down to put it in the refrigerator. I just barely saved it. I wish you could have been here. I scared myself to death. But all was well. I just got a little bit of icing off on the side of the refrigerator. But it, I saved it. So here it is. Once I've got it out of the refrigerator and I pulled that wax paper out, I think it's beautiful. It's what do I always say that my food's very rustic. <laughs> but I did think it was so pretty. And then I took some more of those little miniature chocolate chips and sprinkled them all along the top. And I had some pretty strawberries that I just put around the edges. This was beautiful. One of my greatest joys is making these pretty little pink cakes every year for my daughters and I'll do it as long as I'm able. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video as much as I have. Like I said, it was a little different. I had some different kind of food that I don't normally have on my channel. If you liked it, let me know and I'll try to do more of it. If you like what I normally do, let me know that too. But don't forget to go and check out Sammy's video today and let's see what she's having for supper. I know you're going to love her. Thanks for collabing with me, Sammy. It's been a load of fun. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope that you have a great week to come. I'll see you next Sunday for another What's for Dinner. But until then, I send you love, as always, from my kitchen.